Hi guys, welcome back again to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here doing the show with you. So thank you so much for viewing and tuning into the show. Today we're going to be making something a little different from what we're used to if you're from Kenya. So we're making chicken, but not we're not going to boil our chicken or just pan fry it. We're going to season it and then we're going to put some breadcrumbs into it. So we're making some breadcrumb chicken with some mashed potatoes as well as some sauteed vegetables. So to start off with, we have our chicken here. We have some breadcrumbs, we've got some eggs, we've got some garlic in here, then we've got some peppers. The pepper I'm using here is the red capsicum. You could use green or yellow, whatever you have on hand, but the red one for a pop of color. And then I'm also using some flour, as well as some potatoes, some parsley, some milk, some oils, and these are my utensils, don't worry about them. And then I've also got some broccoli, as you can see as well as some carrots and then for here i've got some salt this is oregano some butter or you could use margarine margarine or butter whichever one you have on hand it's up to you and as well as some cheddar and some black pepper if you don't have cheddar at home this is cheddar cheese if you don't have cheddar cheese you could use something else that melts just as well for example you could use like a parmesan cheese or you could use a mozzarella cheese so just use whatever you have at home and make it work for you you don't have to not do the recipe because you don't have cheddar cheese at home so before we go for our mini break i just want to start off with the potatoes i have some water boiling here and my potatoes are already washed and pre-cut as you can see so these are just normal potatoes that have just diced up so nothing special going on in here, just potatoes, wash, peel them, wash them, and then you dice them up. So these are going to go into my hot water. You could definitely start off with cold water, but I'm just starting off with hot water so that I can speed along the process. So I'm just going to put this in here gently, because remember my water is hot, so you just want to make sure you don't throw this in here, because if you do throw them, then you could end up burning your hand. So just be very gentle, and as long as you're gentle, the water will actually not burn you. <laughs> so it's just a small delicate process. And then once our potatoes are in the water, usually it's a good idea to season your water. I like to do that. So for that, I'm just going to use a bit of salt. As, yeah, just a bit of salt. And then I'm going to cover this and let that come to a boil. And then in the meantime, we're going to go on a short commercial break for you guys. And when you get back, we're going to start the cooking. And now we're going to go on a tiny little break. See you then. Welcome back. If you've just tuned us, nothing much has happened. I've just boiled some potatoes. We're actually making some breadcrumb chicken with some mashed potatoes and some sauteed vegetables. So to start off with, if you just came in, during the break, I put um, the potatoes to go ahead and there's just salt in the water. I'm just boiling these potatoes and I'm going to mash them. And then to start off with right now, I'm going to start with our chicken breasts. So for the chicken breasts, what I have here is some nice, neat chicken breasts, as you can see them. So I'm actually just going to cut this into half, split them into half so it can fasten my cooking process. You don't have to do this at home, it's just something I like to do so that it can make my cooking a little easier and a little faster as well. So I'm just going to split that into half. So you have one half here and another half and I'm going to do the same thing for this other piece. And then once we're done with this, we're going to season this with some salt and some black pepper. So once you have your cuts like this, this actually just makes your chicken a little easier for you to cook and it's going to be a lot faster as compared to if you left it as it was thick. So I'm going to get a plate here and then I'm going to break some of our eggs. Not too many eggs, just two eggs to start off with. And then personally I like to season my 
mixtures for the breadcrumbs every step as I go because I just feel like it brings the flavor up a lot better as compared to if you are only going to season only the egg mixture and then only season the breadcrumb mixture. I like to season every stage of whatever it is I'm making. And you realize that the flavors actually develop a, a, a lot better when you do that. So I'm going to add our flour here. And the idea of breadcrumbing your chicken is just to give your chicken a different flavor other than just cooking it with salt and black pepper, which I love. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you want to do it just a little bit different. So this is a good alternative for that, for you to start off. So for our seasoning, I'm going to add a bit of salt at each step. So just a bit of salt. And then again, I don't want to go too heavy on the salt because I'm adding salt with every stage. And for the cheese, it's actually going to go in my eggs mixture. So this is cheddar cheese in case you missed. And I mentioned if you don't have cheddar cheese, you could definitely use whatever cheese you want at home. For example, you could use Parmesan cheese, you could use um, Red Holland cheese. So just make it work for you. You could also use mozzarella cheese, like a good melting cheese will do. So I'm adding some black, black pepper right now. Then I'm going to add again some in my breadcrumb mixture and my flour mixture. And for the breadcrumbs, this is just store-bought breadcrumbs. If you wanted to make your own at home, you could definitely do that. All you'd need to do is just use your bread and then just blend that up until it's like really fine. So that's for those of you out there who are, who are probably thinking, but I don't know where to get breadcrumbs from. You can definitely make them at home. So this is something that you can easily do. So you've got no excuse of not trying it out. <laughs> so that was oregano that I've just added again in the same context. A little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit here. This is the egg mixture that we're going to put, the flour mixture, and the breadcrumb mixture. Then I'm just going to beat this up, my egg mixture. So I just want to beat this a little bit delicately so that you don't lose any of the mixtures. And then I'm going to mix this as well. Just the flour to incorporate so that everything can come together. As well as our breadcrumb mixture. So to start off with, you always start with the flour. You give it a coating and then now you dip it into your egg mixture, then into the breadcrumb mixture. And again, like I've mentioned, this is a simple recipe. It's not that difficult to do if you're at home. It's something you could definitely try out. Because most of us have flour at home. And all I've done is just add my own spices, salt, black pepper, and oregano. You could easily use some garlic powder, use some paprika. If you don't have oregano, you could def definitely use some thyme leaves or use some basil leaves. So just make the recipe work, with, work for you with whatever you have at home. Don't feel like you're obligated to not try the recipe just because you don't have some of the items that I'm perhaps using. Okay, so once that's done, I've just coated the chicken as you've seen with the flour mixture. Then I'm going to coat it with the cheesy egg mixture. My potatoes are boiling slowly. Then I'm going to transfer this now into my breadcrumb mixture. Okay, and for this I want to do like a double coat so that everything is very well coated and it will just give it like a better crust to start off with. So again, once I'm done with this, start off the same process again. And this usually tends to be a bit of a messy process, so you get used to it. If you don't get your hands dirty, then by all means you could use some tongs, but I don't mind. I find, I find it therapeutic when you get your hands dirty when you're cooking. So to me, it's therapeutic. To you, if you don't want to do it, then use some tongs. <laughs> So again, I'm just doing a double coat so that everything can be well seasoned, well coated, and our chicken breast is going to be nice and crispy. So another coat of the egg mixture. Okay, then from there, we're going to add again the breadcrumbs, back again to the breadcrumbs. 
And what happens when you heat, uh, get this to the pan, the cheese is going to start melting. And it's going to give this beautiful, soft texture to your mixture of the breadcrumbs. And it's also going to crisp them up as well because of the breadcrumbs. So I'm going to wash my hands just a little bit. As you can see, it's a messy job. But like I said, it's therapeutic. If it's not to you, use some tools. So once you're done with washing your hands, always try to get your hands clean every time you're cooking with every step of cooking you're doing. So from that step, I'm going to check on my potatoes. Remember, we added our potatoes earlier on to start off the boiling process. And what I have here is just some salt and some potatoes and water, nothing else. Okay, as I can see, actually you can see my potatoes are already cooked. They're nice and soft. So I'm going to drain this so they do not continue to overcook. And then I mentioned I started my potatoes on hot water just so I could fasten the process. If you're at home, you could definitely use cold water. So just grab your potatoes and then just drain them. And then once you're done draining them, you leave them aside to cool. So we're going to leave this to cool aside. Then as that is cooling, I'm going to go ahead now and start off on my chicken breast. So for the chicken breast, I'm going to use a bit of olive oil. I'm using the light olive oil. You could definitely use the other olive oil, which is stronger in taste. Or you could use any regular oil you have at home. So I'll just get this heated. And this thing is always giving me a problem, the lighter, but don't worry about it. Okay. And so as this is cooling, let me just place this at the back, now that you've had a look at what it looks like. And then now we can proceed with the next step. Okay. So for our breadcrumbs, and I'm starting off with the chicken that's ready. This is what you're looking for, the nice coating. As you can see, our chicken is very well coated. It's very well coated. So I'm going to add some oil to my pan. Not too much, just try and eyeball it if you can. So about a tablespoon, I would say. And then swirl the oil. It's always essential to swirl your oil so that the oil can spread evenly around the pan. That way when you add your chicken mixture, Sorry, that's when you add your chicken breast, it's going to be to cook evenly. As compared to if you didn't swirl your oil around, then the oil is only going to be in one spot. So once your oil is hot, that's a sizzle you want, so make sure you get that sizzle. Otherwise, if you don't get the sizzle, then your pan is not hot enough and your chicken is actually going to end up steaming instead of like turning nice and golden brown. Then do the same thing to the other side. Okay, then now we could repeat the process with the remaining breasts. Then swirl your oil to make sure every bit is coated with the oil nicely. Now in the meantime, we're going to reduce our heat because it's always good to cook on low heat. You don't want your food burning before everything is ready. <laughs> so like I mentioned, this is a really simple recipe. If you're at home, it's something you could definitely try if you haven't tried it out. So for this, I'm just going to finish off this. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and do I'm just clearing the station. So in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and do our vegetables. And I'm just going to clear off my station just a little bit for you guys. And then a tip if you're at home is always to use a spontex like I've done. This just helps your board to not move around. You see that? So it's very easy for you to do your chopping. The board doesn't move around. So let me just do a bit of clearance as I wait for my chicken. 
And then we're going to move on to the vegetables like I've mentioned. And then for the bottom, I'm going to turn it upside down just because I used raw chicken on that side. And I don't want to do the same thing to my vegetables. Again, it's very important that you make sure you do not con cross contaminate your food when you're doing cooked chicken to raw vegetables. It's always essential to make sure you wash your hands, your body is clean, your area is clean before you move on to the next item. My chicken seems to be browning nicely. I'm going to have a look at it, just a little peep. Then we're going to turn it. That's exactly what we're looking for, this beautiful golden brown color. I hope you can see this. That's exactly what we're looking for. So again, remember to reduce your heat on the lowest. And if you need to add some oil as you continue cooking, don't be afraid to do so. So for this, I can see it needs a bit of oil. So I'm just going to add and let that continue cooking. So in the meantime, we're going to get our vegetables. And what I'm using is just some um, some carrots and some broccoli. If you don't have this, then you could use what you have on hand. I like broccoli. You could use mushrooms, definitely. You could use some spinach. You could use some French beans. So for this, I'm just splitting them into smaller sizes, just so that they're bite-sized, manageable sizes. Because I don't have like a hard time when you're chewing. But by all means, if you like your vegetables a little bit on the larger side, then go ahead. Cut them as large as you want to cut them. So for everything we're making today, this is going to be a nice balanced diet because you've got your protein over there, we've got our vegetables here, and we've got our starch going on there, cooling, remember, our potatoes. And for this, you can cut your vegetables any style you want. I always like to alternate how I cut my vegetables. So for this, as you've seen, I'm cutting them in a little slanted shape. I think it just makes them look a little bit prettier with the presentation, of course. And then, as well, remember to keep an eye on your chicken because you don't want it to burn when you're doing something else. Okay, that seems to be going on well. So I'm going to let this continue cooking as now I saute my vegetables. And if you're doing something as simple as I am, you don't always have to start off your broccoli because most times we normally steam our broccoli then cook it. But for what I'm doing, I'm not going to do that step because it's very simple, it's going to be a saute. So I'm going to light our... Okay, so light your, light your stove, put on a pan. And then again, some oil. And as you can see, this is a really simple dish to make. It's nothing complicated. Like I've mentioned, you can use whatever vegetables you want to use. I'm using broccoli. And always remember to wash your broccoli. My broccoli was washed beforehand. My carrots, as you've seen, they were peeled beforehand. So always remember to wash your vegetables before you actually start using them. Just so you can kill off any bacteria there is. So as that is going on, I'm going to add a bit of salt. Not too much. And then I'm going to add a bit of water. Again, very little water. And then let that cook by itself. So what that water is going to do is going to bring out the flavors from the carrots and from the broccoli. So that way they're going to get nice and moist and steam in the liquid as well. Instead of you having to boil, this is like a quicker and faster method if you're making a small batch. By all means, if you're making a larger batch, then you'll want to blanch. Blanching is where you cook now your vegetables beforehand in some hot water, then you cool them in some cold water, shock them in the cold water, then now you saute them. But like I've mentioned, I'm skipping that process because the amount of food I'm cooking is very little and I don't see the need for that. Again, remember to check on your chicken. My chicken is going on well. So for the vegetables we're having, we're having, like I've mentioned, the sauteed vegetables, which are carrots and some 
broccoli as well as the bread from chicken which is which has got some cheese in it and of course our mashed potatoes so again I feel like my chicken is done just going to give it another turn and let it cook again very slowly on the heat as it continues and then in the meantime as you guys go on the break before we go on a short break I'm going to remind you about the potatoes. This is what I want us to do before we go on a short break. So I just want us to mash our potatoes. We're going to mash this with some milk and some butter and some salt and some pepper. So that when you come back, this step will be done. But just so you have an idea of what I'm putting, it's just the potatoes. Add your potatoes, then season. Always remember to season your mixture. So I'm going to season some pepper. Again, if you don't like pepper, you don't have to add it. And of course, I'm going to add some salt. A bit of salt. As well as some butter. And I mentioned you could use margarine or whatever else you have on hand. So a good heaped teaspoon or a tablespoon. And then add your milk. A good amount of milk and then now we're going to mash this so if you don't have a potato masher so I'm going to put this off because I can see this is already getting ready so if you don't have a good potato masher you could definitely just use a muiko so that it can be easy for you to mash but if you've got one this is a lot easier to do so as you've seen that's all I've put we've put some milk some salt some pepper some butter as well as now the potatoes so we're going to go on a short break as I continue to mash this so that when you guys come back, our potatoes, our potatoes mixture will be done, the mashed potato, and my vegetables will be done, and the chicken will be done. It will be time for us to get on and start plating. So see you in a little bit. Welcome back to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. If you've just tuned in, we were making some breadcrumb chicken with some mashed potatoes as well as some vegetables. Now from where we left off, I just added my ingredients for my mashed potatoes, which was some milk, some salt, some black pepper, some butter or margarine. And then I just mashed this up during the commercial break. And then once this is done, as you can see, usually something else you could add if you wanted, you could add some herbs, you could, some herbs basically like parsley or some dania. You could also add some garlic if you wanted, you could saute, saute some garlic and add some. But I'm going to keep it simple today and just show you just a basic mashed potato and that's exactly what it looks like. So once it's mashed, and like I mentioned, if you don't have a masha, you could definitely use a, a muiko, which is basically a wooden ladle. If you're not from Kenya, you don't know what muiko means. It's a Kiswahili term, which means a wooden ladle. So that's what you'd use. So once your mixture is that way, then you set it aside. So for this, I'm going to put that aside as I check on everything else to see whether everything is ready to be plated but before that I'm going to make a sauce because I've noticed like everything's a bit dry and I know you need a sauce with your food for the vegetables during the break I added some capsicums just because I like capsicums and then I'm going to throw in some garlic as you can see it's got the charred marks the beautiful charred marks and that's exactly what you want with your sauteed vegetables so I'm going to add some garlic in here and then I'm going to put them back but if you don't want the garlic, you could definitely skip that step. I like garlic, so and since I'm not adding garlic in the mashed potatoes, I'm opting to add it in my vegetables. So then back again to the heat we go. Just a little bit. And then we're going to saute that until they get warm enough. And this is our chicken. If you've just missed out, this was the chicken, the breadcrumb chicken which had the nice cheese in it. It had some salt, some black pepper, as well as some oregano. So this is our breadcrumbed chicken. And then while that is sauteing, I'm going to put um, another pan here. 
and then I'm just going to heat it up. Sorry about that. Such things always happen in the kitchen. Okay. Then we're going to toss this. Just a little tossing. Again, if you're not so equipped with your tossing, always make sure that you can use a wooden, a wooden spoon. But I like tossing, as you can see. And it's like a little practice. It's therapeutic. I find a lot of things in the kitchen very therapeutic. So once that's done, I'm just tossing my vegetables so they can be well incorporated with my garlic. And then I'm going to put off the heat, as you've seen, and then cover this so that it can be nice and warm by the time I come to serve it. So for this, we're going to add some, let me reduce the heat just a little bit. For this, we're going to add our garlic. And then I'm going to add some olive oil. You could use the regular oil. I'm just adding a bit of olive oil because I like the taste. As well as now my butter or margarine, whatever you have at home. And the reason I'm adding both of them, the oil and the margarine, is so that the margarine does not brown before before the oil because when you add just only the butter or margarine it tends to brown very quickly so basically the oil just helps it to not brown as quickly so that's a tip if you're not sure that's a new tip for you guys to learn okay once your oil has melted what we're going to add in there is some we're going to add some milk so i'm just going to place this here so you can see that that's just normal milk and then we're going to add our flour there's nothing special in the flour, just normal flour. This is just going to help thicken the sauce. Just a bit of flour. Then place that aside. And then you want to get now your wooden spoon and stir this together. And so what I'm making here, this is actually known as a roux, which is a French term. If you're not a chef, a roux is basically a French term, which basically just means bringing together flour and an oil-based item. In this case, I've used oil or butter. You could also use lard, which is um, the fat from animals. So just make it work for you. And then once you've incorporated it smoothly, now I don't want it getting very thick, so that's fine with me. Once the, but, um, once the flour is well mixed in, as you can see, it's now time to add our milk. And so what I'm making here is actually known now as a bechamel sauce, which is just a white sauce. And then we're just going to whisk this. Whisk this, and then I'm going to add some parsley, so which then becomes a parsley sauce. So depending what you decide to add to it, you get different things from it. And again, if you like your garlic, I like garlic, like I mentioned. So I'm just going to stir this until it's nice and smooth. And you can see it starts to thicken, as you can see, it starts to thicken. So just keep stirring. And then I'm going to place it out of the heat just for a second so that I can add my parsley. Again, if you don't have parsley at home, you could definitely use whatever herbs you have. So you could use some... Um, you could use some rosemary if you wanted, you could use some thyme if you wanted, you could use some coriander if you wanted. So again, just use whatever it is you have available at home. So I'm just chopping this. It doesn't have to be too fine. So not too much, just place this in there. And then again, we're going to keep stirring. So back again to the heat, then now we're going to keep stirring. And you see that our sauce is already thickened and usually at this step you could now season, add some salt, some black pepper, whatever you'd like to add. You could add some parsley as well if you wanted. I'm just going to keep it simple and add some salt and some black pepper. So this is a really simple sauce that I've showed you guys how to make it and what to do at home. If you're ever in a situation whereby you've made food and you feel it's a little bit dry, this is something easy you could now do at home. You could make your own sauce and simple ingredients. Again, all I've used is just flour and some milk, some parsley, some garlic, as well as some salt and black pepper. If you don't have, if you don't want to use milk or maybe you're lactose intolerant, you could definitely use water. 
So it's no excuse again for you not to try making the sauce. Okay, once that's done, so it gets to, uh, to thick, too thick. You may want to add a bit of milk, just a little bit. But again, if you want it very thick, then by all means, you don't have to add it. I don't want it too thick. So I'm just going to dilute it a little bit so that it's still a bit runny. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So once it's like that, put it off. And then set it aside. And this milk is just so that it doesn't continue to cook because always remember, whenever you're cooking your food, there's always residue residue heat in the pan which continues to cook the food when you set it aside so always account for that and then once we're done it's now time for us to do our plating so i'm just going to remove this place it aside just a little clearance wash my hands and then we're ready to plate so again, for what we're having today is some breadcrumb chicken, some mashed potatoes, some vegetables, and of course, a sauce. And the sauce I've made is a parsley sauce. So I'm going to get my mash and then get your plate ready. And then get a spoon to serve your mashed potatoes. So just scoop your mashed potatoes as you would. So I'm just going to place mine at the side of the plate. And this is for one portion, so again, you don't want it too much. Then place that on the side. Then we're going to get our chicken, which looks absolutely gorgeous, don't you think so? It looks lovely. So it's nice and um, Nice and golden brown. Sorry, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the tongs. <laughs> okay, so once you get your tongs, get your chicken breast, and then just place it on top of your mashed potatoes like that. And this is the beautiful golden brown color I'm talking about. You don't want your chicken breast to brown too much because then it's going to get this bitter taste, which you definitely don't want. And then these are vegetables. Remember our vegetables, all they have is some salt, some black pepper, and then of course I finished them off with some garlic because I like garlic. And the vegetables themselves are actually just some capsicums, some red capsic capsicums, some broccoli and some carrots. So I'm going to plate this on the side, just so you have an idea of what it is that I'm putting on the plate. a really simple meal that you can do at home like I showed you these are ingredients you can easily get I mentioned if you can't find broccoli you can definitely definitely use other vegetables like kale spinach French beans so again it's no excuse for you not to make the food at home just because you don't have one or two items that I'm cooking with okay your vegetables are done and then now you want to add the sauce Again, remember to stir your sauce. And then we're going to pour our sauce um, some on top of the chicken, like that, and then the other one on this other side. Because I don't cover the whole chicken, I want you to have a peep of what the chicken is. And there you go. So our food is looking nice and delicious. So again, what we made today was some breadcrumb chicken with some mashed potato, with some broccoli, which is, with some mixed vegetables, which is broccoli, some capsicums, and some carrots, and of course my sauce, which in this case is a parsley sauce. So again, it's just very simple food, as you can see. Very nice looking food. <laughs> very simple things you can make at home. So I'm just trying to get you out there to make sure that you do your cooking, and always make sure you get involved at home. So if you've got kids at home, try to get them involved with your food and everything else so that that way you're all one in the kitchen. So again, if you are just tuning in, I've mentioned we were making some breadcrumb chicken with some mashed potatoes and, and vegetables. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Remember again to join in and tune in for Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. You can also follow us um, on our social media, which is Brand Plus TV. So I hope to see you guys there. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Shina Amario. Have a good evening. Bye.